Good morning, Cupcakes. It is a beautiful morning here in Zephyrtown. I hope your day is going wonderfully. On the agenda for today is Ivan's birthday, which is today, fall 20th. And in addition to that, we have the wine festival. But first, the very first thing we want to do is get this spinach turned into seeds. Otherwise, we're going to be a little late planting it today. First, let's give this a nice little blow. Range story games in general just have amazing soundtracks. Um, but Grand Bazaar in particular, Grand Bazaar really nailed it as far as the aesthetics go, just in general. Not just the soundtrack, but the visuals too. The character designs. It's so charming. There's a lot of missed opportunities that uh, um, Grand Bazaar had. You know, I'm not gonna and say, oh yeah, it's, it's the best in the series in every possible way. There are a lot of missed opportunities. Um, but I think for the most part, it's, it's done a really great job. I do, I do take issue with the whole uh, one seed to one crop what they did with that. I mean, I think it could have worked out really well, but... <gasps> Golden egg! And I forgot to get the eggs in the morning. Oh. oh. So good. I was doing so well the past couple episodes. Anyway, um, yeah, no, the, the one seed to one crop, that could have out worked out really well, except they did it... They designed it so very poorly. And as a result, it kind of overemphasizes regrowables and so like turnips for example are just not as good to grow the whole one seed to one crop could have worked out really well but because they decided okay you only get two seeds for every crop that you put in the uh, windmill the whole two seeds per crop thing it kind of makes it a very bad idea to grow non-regrowables I was. So, I'll, I'll tell you something though. My favorite part about this game is definitely, is definitely real, the bazaar. Uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. The aesthetics are fantastic. They, like I said, they really nailed it with that. But I was not a huge fan of the shipping box. Of the shipping box system that's been in every single harvest, every single harvest moon and story of seasons game, um, except for this one. What? A birthday present? I'm so happy. Thank you very much. I was so disappointed when I tried out uh, Twin Villages and they pointed out the shipping box and I was like, no. And you know, I, I can understand not particularly wanting the bazaar to just be the only way of selling your items for a decent price. See, I think there was a good, a good way to do that. I think you could have had, you know, a system where you could have a shipping box, right? And you get, say, 80% from that. Whereas if you sell something at the market day or something like that, then you get 100% of the profit. And so at the start of a playthrough, when when it's most important you you get the you do you sell your stuff at the market day and then later on it's you know you can just go ahead and sell your stuff for the 80% value you know when it's not so necessary to squeeze every single penny out of what you get out of your products and that way you could have kind of the best of both worlds. Oh, whoops. Actually, let's back here and do this. I actually don't know if we have anything processing in there at the moment. Oh, but I did want to start going with some cheese. So, you do lose money by turning milk into cheese, but at the same time, um, some people like cheese. And, uh, um... I want to, so I want to be giving that stuff as gifts. And of course, you you need cheese for certain recipes and things like that. 
So it's not like it's completely useless to turn uh, your milk into cheese or butter or your eggs into mayonnaise. It's just you don't want to do that if you're planning on selling them. <gasps> you notice how it's not shaking? You know what that means? Wheat! Our wheat seeds are done! Oh my goodness. Alright, and so actually, because the wheat seeds are done... Oh. First, I want to get this Oki butterfly, if I can. No, unfortunately no. Now that our wheat seeds are done, we can go ahead and install this blue wonderful into, uh, into this windmill. Actually... We can install the blue wonderfall in wonderful into this windmill. See, it's nice and blue, and that will decrease the processing time by I think it's like a third or something like that. It's it's actually quite a bit. Having your stuff done really quickly is helpful in a lot of ways, both because it will help you replant your seeds faster, and because well, you've got a lot of use for it and so you can process more stuff if your stuff processes faster. Anyway, that's just why I prefer the Blue Wonderful for the seed windmill. For the grinding one. Well, not the seed windmill. You have other uses for it, which, by the way, we haven't been using. We need to bottle some chestnuts and, uh, um, and make some honey. And I guess we'll go ahead and do that as well. If you made it this far in the video, don't forget to like it if you haven't already, to subscribe to this channel if you aren't already, and to hop in the comments and really just write anything. Let me know how your day's going, let me know your thoughts on the game, on my playthrough of it, whatever. I really do love to hear all of that stuff, and all of it really does help me out, and it helps my videos show up in your inbox more consistently, so don't forget to do that. Oh. Whoops. Did not mean... Almost hit Marion with a hoe. <laughs> Didn't mean to imply anything by that either. I just needed one space in my bag. Thank you, I hope you like it. Mmm. Delicious. Oh man. Yesterday, um, so I, every year, my sisters, my mom and I, we get together for a, uh, a Christmas brunch, and the place that we usually have it at, we're kind of book solid, because every restaurant, um, in the state is at 25% capacity, and so, uh, um, so we went to a different place, and they didn't have anything like what I usually get, so... I went ahead and I got a uh, chicken fried steak dinner, and I specifically got that because it came with a salad. And uh, I've been very low on vegetables as of late. And oh, it was just it was just iceberg lettuce with like, you know, it's one of those one of those cheapo salad mixes, right? With with some uh, some ranch dressing on it, but it was so good because I have just not had any lettuce as of late. And uh, contrary to what my oldest sister will tell you, I actually do love vegetables. I had a blood clot um, a few years ago, and uh, um, so I can't have much in the way of, well, leafy greens or roasted broccoli. And uh, that's that's kind of one of the more frustrating things is because I love roasted broccoli. It is one of my favorite things and uh, unfortunately can't have much of it or I will risk another blood clot. The chicken fried steak was also very delicious as was the green beans. That's actually well green beans aren't actually a vegetable. People think they're a vegetable but they aren't. Um, but when I was in the hospital after my blood clot they served green beans for almost every... They served it every day, at least, and sometimes twice a day. And I was so sick of green beans by the end of it, especially because they were so incompetently made. They were just like the worst green beans ever, and green beans are not all that great in the first place. 
and I was just done with it by the end. Um, you're, you're, you're. But yeah, the green beans that came with my meal were actually fantastic. There were green beans, onions, and bacon. And there was another flavor. I don't know if it was butter or... Or garlic or scallions or, or not scallions. What am I thinking of? Yo. Yo. You know, there's like those miniature onion things, like the halfway between an on, uh, an onion and a garlic, a clove of garlic, something like those things. Um, Yo. Yo. I should know it. I'm not usually a fan of them, but anyway. But yeah, it was it was delicious. It was all good. I was thinking, yes, the asparagus is done. So I don't have any qualms about brutally murdering these uh, um, these strawberry plants. We only need one more strawberry before we have a full a full complement of strawberries to plant this next spring. So. Shouldn't be an issue. So, in case you can tell, only a direct shot with the hoe will clear out seeds. Alright. But yeah, see, so... We're planting 18 wheat seeds, but we're only actually going to get 9 wheat out of this. Which, that's another thing, by the way, just for the record, that I'm very frustrated by with this game, is the fact that... You can't buy flour. As far as I know, this is the only Ranch Story game where you cannot buy flour. You have to produce it yourself. Wheat flour, that is. You can buy sheer tama flour. You can buy rice, which you can turn into rice flour. You can buy all sorts of other flours. But wheat flour? No. That's, that's not allowed. And that is so very frustrating. Oops. No, please turn. Oh no. Well, unfortunately, we're not going to get many training stars from this, but frankly, we could just go ahead and not do any of these. We could just go ahead and not do any of these, and we'd be fine. We'd get to max friendship pretty easily before the next horse race. My goodness, that was awful. All right, let's, let's just go ahead and forget that that ever happened. I would be very appreciative if we could do that. Today is the Zephyr Town Wine Festival and we were asked as the farmer to bring wine. And we were just told, hey, please bring some wine. So, we could just really do the bare minimum if we wanted and just bring some cheapo red wine. But, we on Freedom Farm do not do the bare minimum. We go above and beyond. And then beyond again. And we bring champagne to the wine festival. Oh yes, that's right. And don't, wor and don't worry, because... In the coming years, the coming wine festivals, we're going to do even fancier stuff. Great! Let's get started! Thank you all for coming! Claude organized this festival so we can all enjoy wine and food together! Thank you, Felix. I did the cookie, but we owe our thanks to Ray for providing the wine. The champagne. Enjoy, everyone. Mmm. That is some good champagne. Thanks for helping me today. It's nothing big, but here's a gift for you, Ray. And I believe that's great cheese. That cheese will go with any type of wine. I'll see you next time as well, I hope. Great herb cheese, that's right. It's not just great cheese, it's great herb cheese. Oof. Yes. This is very nice, thank you very much. And I forgot to give a Mont Blanc to Stuart. 
Oh, oh, a Mont Blanc. I really love these. This looks great. Thank you. Oh, yes, let that be a lesson to you. Never settle for good enough. Always go above and beyond. No matter what you do in life, no matter where, where you are in your life right now, if you go above and beyond, if you make that a habit, if you make that a goal to not just settle for good enough, but to go above and beyond and to really make every effort to produce the best product or service or whatever, then then your life will be on an upward trend. And that's not just for your career either. That's not just, you know, if you're focusing on your career and going above and beyond and blah, blah, blah. That's just for life in general. For all aspects of it. There was one time when we had to give presentations as part of this uh, this thing. I'm not gonna explain it, take too long, but anyway. And it was made very clear to us that if we said um or uh or hmm or, you know, those sort of things during the presentation, we would get points marked off. Well, one of my friends was very, very careful about that. I forgot the eggs, didn't I? And it was a golden egg, too. Oh my goodness, that could have been bad. Anyway, one of my friends was very, very careful about that. And... There was just this long silence where... He was trying to remember what was on the presentation without looking at it. But he couldn't. And so he said... I forgot my place. And he looked back at his notes and, you know, carried on. And at the end, I, because this is just the kind of guy that I am, raised my hand and asked, does I forgot my place count as a delaying sound? Or whatever, whatever it was called, the, you know, the ums and the uhs and the errs. And, uh, the teacher's like, yes, that does. <laughs> he was very, very displeased at me about that, but I don't think, like, I don't think it really mattered. I don't think it was one of those things where it's like, yeah, well, she wouldn't have thought that it does, in except for the fact that I said something, right? I think she was like, yeah, no. but I mean, he got very high marks on his, uh, um, on his presentation anyway. So. And it's not like the actual grade of the presentation didn't really matter that much. Frankly, none of it really mattered all that much. This was one of those really soft, soft systems where it's just like, yeah, as long as you don't... I mean, even if you completely blow it off, that was the thing. Is that there were a lot of things that we were supposed to be doing, that we were required to do in order to go through this program, and a lot of people just didn't do it. And they still were allowed in the program. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, but I think that's going to have to be everything for today. So I hope the rest of your day is a good one, and I hope to see you later. Bye.